the title of my book for parents is Attention Difference Disorder. I'm not really meaning or wanting to change the name. Of course, it's been changed so many times, as you've said. It's really about a different understanding. And it came out of years sitting in the clinic where parents would say, how can you say my child has a focus problem when if I let him sit in front of the Xbox or iPad, he could sit there for eight or 10 hours if I didn't pry the things out of his hands, right? He can focus. And it's like, well, yeah, but he focuses differently, right? And those of us with ADHD, we can still focus. In fact, many of us can hyper-focus, right? Get so fixated on what's important to us, what the goal is, that we kind of neglect and ignore so many other things around us. You know, that's actually like neurologically not a good thing. I mean, it can be very helpful in our modern world, but if you think of back on the savannah or back in caveman times, whatever, if you were so focused on what you were doing that you were not aware of your environment, you could be killed, right? Survival instinct, you gotta pay attention and be aware. When you're hyper-focused in modern times, there's no woolly mammoth gonna eat you sort of thing. So you may be productive when you when sort of like the stars align and you finally like can hit that focus and get some stuff done for several hours, right? Um, so we focus differently we fo than other people. We still can focus. So we focus a lot better when something is new and exciting when something's thrilling, when something gets our dopamine flowing. We focus a lot worse on things that are boring, mundane, and regular, right? So I remember years ago seeing an adult with ADHD who, you know, was sort of middle level management in a big corporation, had a lot of responsibility and, you know, took care of a whole bunch of things. And his electricity was going to be cut off the next week because he didn't get around to opening his mail and paying his electric bill, right? Like, the task of the papers. Now, these days, you can kind of automate it with your electronic banking and things. And many people use those strategies. Back in the day, you had to open up the envelope, find the bill, maybe even mail a check or whatever, and his electricity was going to be cut off. It's like, you know, man, you need help for your ADHD. Like, you got to keep a roof over your head, right? So we can focus on things that are interesting, exciting. We struggle with more boring stuff. Now, people could say, well, you know, okay, so you can focus on things you'll like and not focus on things you don't like. Well, why don't you actually just work hard, try harder and stop being lazy, right? You know, which is sort of one of the core criticisms of ADHD to begin with. To that, I say, well, there are many medical conditions to, you know, where the symptoms change based on the situation, right? In fact, if you have heart disease, blockage in the heart arteries, to actually see if you have it, they'll put you on a treadmill get your heart going and see if the strain impacts it, right? See if it can show the symptoms of heart disease when you're in that situation. If you have asthma, I remember when I was first being tested for asthma as a kid, you know, at the in Toronto at the pediatrician's office, he had me, you know, do, breathe into a thing and then run up and down the stairs five times in his office building and then breathe again. And there was a difference. Okay, you've got exercise induced asthma, right? Like, uh, but the symptom wasn't there just sitting there. I had to be in the environment that brought out the symptom. So those of us with ADHD, it's not just that we don't try. We focus differently. 